So what would you say is the average price for a house in the United Kingdom in 2022? Take a wild guess. Now it's a lot more than I thought it would be, way more than I thought it would be. But I guess if you take some things into consideration, the average house is probably gonna be a family house. It's probably gonna have three bedrooms, maybe more, maybe a garage, a lot of new builds have garages, maybe a garden, you'd assume a garden for the price. And I guess that the housing market in the United Kingdom at the moment is crazy. House prices have gone crazy. But the, the average price for a house in the United Kingdom in 2022 is 292,000 pounds. That was from July in 2022. Now that got me thinking about houses in my local area and how much the houses here are. Now I live in Hebden Bridge in West Yorkshire and the cheapest house you can buy here is 150,000 pounds. Now to put that into more context, in this town there are only four houses under 200,000 pounds and here is the cheapest one you can buy. This house is 150,000 pounds. So that right there is the cheapest house that you can buy in Hebden Bridge for £150,000. So I'm going to Lancashire today, which sounds a lot more dramatic than it is when you realise that the border to Lancashire is only about three miles down the road. But beyond that is the town of Burnley, which is one of the cheapest places to buy a house in the United Kingdom. There is currently a house on the market in Burnley for £12,000. And to put that into context, under £60,000 in Burnley, there are currently 33 properties on the market, under £60,000. So I'm gonna to go to Burnley and see some of these houses and explore the area and see why just a 12 mile drive, just a 35 minute drive down the road, these houses drop so much in price. Right, so welcome to Burnley. So in the pub last night, I was chatting to two people who used to live in Burnley a while back, but they were telling me about some really notorious areas and giving me some first-hand accounts of how dangerous Burnley can be. Maybe they were doing this to scare me a little bit, but I did go and look, and Burnley does have a really high crime rate, and a high proportion of that crime rate is break-ins. So you can see why that would massively affect house prices in the area. If you're not going to feel safe in your home, you're not going to really want to live there. So I'm pretty sure the first house is just up here to the left. Right, and here it is. The street anyway. Let's have a look. Pine Street. Okay. Let's check this out. Big metal bars over your door. Stopping people breaking in. More as well. Oh, this is it. I think this is the house. Yeah, this is the house. This is the first house. So in terms of size, that house is pretty much exactly the same size as the house in Hebden. And I think that one's 38,000 pounds. Let's explore the area a little bit. So let's have a wander up and see the streets surrounding it. There's just so many properties that are just boarded up, either commercial properties or houses. Look, another one here. A lot of signs on the doors as well saying beware of the dog. It's a good way to keep intruders out. There we go, guard dog, enter at your own risk. Well, there we have it, house number one. 38,000 pounds, I think. Yeah, yeah. Is it dangerous, Burnley? Are there, are there areas that are dangerous? Because I was chatting to someone last night and they were giving it all. Oh, I used to live in Burnley, Burnley's really dangerous. But I was like, is it? Does it have a high crime rate? Is it? It does, it does. Because you've got, in that area, you have a lot of drug users up there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because they need to feed the rabbit dog. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's not. I wouldn't say anybody 
you can walk, I can walk down now, but I do, I, when I'm going to work, I walk down here, goes past five in the morning, yeah, 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 there's me, light time, nobody will go there to the shops, yeah, yeah, right, sound anyway, nice to meet okay. you, mate, all the best, yeah, take care, thank you. So I just got chatting to a guy then who lived on the terrace just in front of the house where we were looking at. And he said that street behind used to be really nice. It used to be such a nice street. All houses were owned by people. And he said the issue is from landlords. Landlords coming in, buying these houses super cheap. They can have them paid off in two years if they get them really cheap. And then they don't care which tenants are in. They don't care who's in there. They don't care the state of it. They don't care what it looks like. But he was saying it's not dangerous. He was like, Burnley's not dangerous. He was like, I'm fine walking about any time. So I think that might be a lot of hype. So that guy was talking about an area as well where he was saying there's 350,000 pound houses on one side of the road. And then on the other side of the road, there's houses worth 20 grand. And I said, I was going to look at a house today uh, and I was trying to describe the area to him. And he said, oh, this is where I was just talking about. So one of the houses we're going to see today is where that guy was talking about with posh houses on one side and then cross the road and there's really, really cheap houses. Right, let's go to house number two. Right, so I've parked up at Lidl and we're on the hunt for house number two. And again already. More boarded up houses. Yeah, so running all around this island of houses is a roundabout and roads going everywhere. So they're kind of just stuck here. But well, they're all right, the streets are nice. You've got all your shops you want down there. Your pizzeria, your Kurdish hot towel shaves, Barry's Bargains. The bargain shop, Enzo's. Your fresh halal meat, big fruit shop. This is prime location. And the creme de la creme where I parked Lidl. So you've got a Lidl literally on your doorstep. That can't be that bad. A fancy car under a cover there. More bars on windows. Let's walk up this one. So you can't really tell from the front of the houses, but I think a lot of these are just empty and left abandoned, waiting to sell or waiting to let out. But clearly no one lives there. Look at that fortress built. No one's getting in there. Jesus. You see that on the top of the wall there to stop people climbing over, there were big chunks of glass just glued. I don't know how they got it there, just spread out across the wall. No one is climbing over that. Nobody. Imagine picking up this little estate here and just popping it in London and seeing how ludicrous the house price has turned into then. These houses that are going for 25 grand, 30 grand, 12 grand, if that can be true. So Burnley's got good transport links as well. You've got Manchester, which is just a direct train away, about 40 minutes, I think. So at some point, will people move back to this area and give it some new life? Because there's loads of houses, that's for sure. I think it's up here. For sale, for sale, for sale. For sale down there. They're all just for sale. And here is house number two. Street's all right. I think that one's on for 25 grand. So 
So on the end, it looks like they started knocking down the end house to do something with it, and then just thought, okay, we'll just leave it. Just leave all the rubbish there, the rubble. So that's the other house, that's the 25 grand house. But then there's one there for sale, one there for sale. Cheap houses, but nice cars around the area. Something doesn't add up there. There is something about when you've got bars over windows and bars over doors. It does make you feel a bit uneasy about the place. Just thinking, why are people doing that? But aside from that, feels totally safe. Feels fine. Right, on to house number three now, where I think there's an open viewing. So hopefully we'll be able to uh, get inside. But first, I'm gonna utilize the area for what it is. Get myself a coffee. Right, so here we are at the third and the final area of Burnley we're looking at today. And there's a house down here and it's the one that was on the market for 12,000 pounds. And there's an open viewing in about an hour. So I'm hoping we're gonna be able to go inside and have a look around. But first, let's just explore the area a little bit. Ooh, look at that view. So this area is right near the train station. The train station that takes you directly to Manchester. So you'd think this would be a popular place, but let's have a look. Right, so I've just met two guys who are doing up a house on this street here. You're from Burnley, yeah? Yeah, a bit of a rundown area, like a um, bit of a rough, rough estate, if you will. Yeah, yeah. So it's just been let go, but now obviously investors are picking up these houses for cheap and trying to make the areas better, becoming a better area. Yeah, yeah. But the more, the more that people buy these houses out, then obviously they'll get better, won't they? Yeah, yeah. Better tenants get so, better. So buy one now and hope that the boom yeah, happens soon. Yeah, yeah. Right, nice one anyway, mate. Yeah, take it easy. Right, so those guys were telling me that 10 years ago, maybe this entire street would have been boarded up. I mean, there's still a lot of boarded up houses on it. Big gates, big doors, look at this. And this is the area where just over there, across the road, there are big houses, the 350,000 pound houses that guy was telling us about earlier on. Just come a few streets down and pretty much half the streets are boarded up so strange and again just another street down house for sale house for sale but they're not getting bought up by people who want a home they're getting bought up by landlords who don't care about these places they can buy them super cheap have them paid off in two years and then just rent them out to whoever they want they don't care about what happens to them they don't care about the state of them it brings the value of the area down I can't believe how many of these houses are just completely empty and boarded up. Another one here. Let's explore a bit more. Ooh. So that one house that had tape all over it saying danger keep out and that seemed really ominous but then i remembered it was halloween the other day so that was probably just from that but every street i come to about every five doors there's just a complete derelict house boarded up and right then was the first time i felt a bit unsafe in burnley there was a lad on his bike i say lad he was probably about 30 but he was just staring me out and he looked a bit shifty. He was probably just wondering what I was doing with my camera, but he would not take his eyes off me. So I thought, right, I'm getting out of this bit. <laughs> I'm gonna uh, get off his patch. But yeah, I'm sure he was just wondering what I was doing with his camera. Let's hope he doesn't reappear. Right, yeah, you go from those boarded up terrace streets there to this.
completely polarizing streets. The opposite of each other. This feels like Privet Drive. It's so strange, you get one row of houses with loads of boarded up properties, then we moved onto that street with the big nice houses, and I thought that'd continue, but no, just one more street down, and we're back to boarded up properties. It's crazy. Look at that. That's on your front door. <laughs> and they're obviously trying to get people to not just toss stuff onto the street because there was a sign there for skips for hire. So someone's trying to at least uh, do their bit and offer cheap skips to put your rubbish in or just toss it on the road, your choice. So what do you reckon? Could you live here in Burnley? Ooh, oh, this is a good one. I'll try that again. Could you live here in Burnley? Have you seen anything that would make you want to move here? This area especially, this third area that I've come to visit, is strange. There's so many boarded up properties. There's rubbish everywhere. But it's so close to the station. And then in the middle of it, there's just these nice houses. And then across the road over there, there's some really nice houses. It's bizarre. So over there is the, uh, the streets we've just been walking. And this is just across the road, and look at this. Big houses with big gates. So this is the house here that's on the market for £12,000. And they're doing an open house viewing today. So let's go in, have a little look round and see if we can figure out why it might not be worth that much. I think it's just a high turnover of stock. A lot of, you get a lot of social housing tenants, they come in, they wreck it, do things like this to it, then move on, don't pay the rent, etc. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. That is the one on the end there for sale. And I've just been in to have a look around, and it is a mess. It is a mess. They've done absolutely no effort to make it at all presentable to anyone. Which means they don't really care who gets it. They don't care what's gonna happen to it. They don't care about his future. And the guy was saying in there, the reason properties are so cheap around here is just a high turnover. It's just things just move so quickly around here. Someone comes into it, trashes it, they move on, next person does it, da da da. Same again, same again. None of these are long-term investments. That was so gross inside. Well, you can see why these houses are so cheap. He said that 
the guide price for that is 12 grand. He says they'll want more than that. But they do say that's the minimum offer they'd accept. But he said other houses around here are going for 20 grand. So this has been Burnley. What do you think? So three different locations today, three different areas, but all with some things in common. You've got a lot of properties that have got gates and bars over the doors. You've got a lot of properties that are just boarded up or completely derelict. So many properties to let, sold, to let, sold on every single street. And there's a lot of rubbish everywhere as well. So just as I was filming that then, a guy up the road, and I said, oh, can I have a quick chat? Anyway, so I went and had a chat with him. I didn't want to film him because he was just going into his house. But he was saying that he feels safe in this area. He said down there, which I think was where all that rubbish was when we walked along there, he was like, that's a pretty rough area, um, a pretty deprived area. But um, he also said that for as long as he can remember, all these houses around here have just been to let. So landlords getting them and letting them out and letting them out. But he said he feels safe around here. So that's Burnley. What a nice way to end it. A guy who said it is safe. He said it is nice. So check it out. If you want to move to Burnley, have a look online. Have a look at some of these cheap properties. Go and view one. I recommend that, that was quite an experience. Now I don't have any answers as to why the houses are so cheap there. I just wanted to walk around, explore the town, see some of these properties, get inside one and build up a picture in my head, which I think I did. I think I got a good image of why houses are cheap in Burnley. I'm gonna leave you now with some words from the poet John Cooper Clark. I tell you now and I tell you firmly, I don't never wanna go to Burnley. What they do there don't concern me. Why would anybody make the journey?